Today's cool fact of the day is that Americans eat 100 pounds of chocolate or more per second. And the reason this is the cool fact of the day for today on Bulletproof Radio is that we're going to be talking a lot about memory. And you might have seen on Google or somewhere if, that if you Google chocolate and brain, you'll find all kinds of interesting results about what chocolate does, much like coffee, for human performance. Today's guest on the show is Matthias Ribbing. Matthias is the leading brain trainer in Sweden. He's an educator, a public speaker, but he's also a three-time Swedish memory champion, and he's ranked number 75 in the world and has actually been awarded the title of Grand Master of Memory, which only 122 people have ever done. He achieved all this in the past basically six years because he only started hacking his memory in 2008. And when we're talking about hacking memory, it's not little things like remembering the names of people you met. It's memorizing a thousand random digits in an hour. It's memorizing the order of 10 decks of cards in an hour or one deck of cards in under two minutes. And that's pretty amazing. These skills are fully trained, not things that he was born with. Matthias, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Dave. It's a pleasure. Now, we're talking today, uh, you're in Sweden, right? Oh, yeah. Awesome. And uh, I'm here in Victoria, BC, so we're almost as far north as each other. And it's funny, I got married in Stockholm, which is where you are. Wonderful. Now, I want to understand something. You say that memory is a sport or memory, memory championships or memory training is a sport. Do people get mad when people say that that's a sport? Because what's well, not a sport, you know, you didn't have to take a hit. You didn't have to lift anything heavy. You just had to like look at a sheet of paper for a while and then play it back. Yeah. That's the reason that us and chess, we can't get into the official council of sports that uh, <laughs> are because we don't move enough, but uh, hell yeah, this is a sport, uh, but it's around, it's a funny one, but it's been around for like 23 years now. Uh, there are world championships and all kinds of international tournaments. And uh, yeah, we meet basically for a weekend and there's a decathlon with 10 different uh, events with 10 different kinds of informations that we have to take in as much information as possible and then be able to uh, recite it exactly as it was. So it's, for example, uh, as you said, numbers and decks of cards, but also we have words, images, names, faces, sounds, different things. So you should be able to uh, use your brain for any kind of information that you might encounter during a day. And we do these crazy things that, uh, for example, as you said, with the numbers, uh, that, that, that's, that's one of the marathon events. We have both speed events and marathon events. The marathons, we get like uh, a sheet of paper, just random digits for, to stare at for an hour. After that, we get a blank sheet of paper and a pen and then have to write down exact the, the order of uh, as many as we can remember. And you, the least, if you only have small mistakes, you get a lot of stuff deducted. So after that time, uh, as you said, I do, I do something like a uh, paper of this. Now uh, you may be able to see it, but this is a thousand digits correct all after each other. And that's the official... Uh, what you need to do to become an, a, a grandmaster in one of the events. So if you're listening from your car or something, uh, not watching on iTunes or on YouTube, you would have seen a whole sheet full of basically small numbers, maybe spaced a quarter inch apart. So you just stare at that thing and you memorize it and then you write down all the numbers from memory again. So the, the, this is the sports, uh, and the, it's a fun thing to do, but a bit silly in a way, but it's good to prove to people that this can all be done with brain training. It's a super quantifiable way of brain training that you can test and you can see that uh, before I was only able to, as, as anyone, I was not a genius in any way, average in school and so on. And from, you maybe you will be able to remember 10 uh, digits uh, or so, and then some brain training in between, you can do a thousand. So that's the, really to show the quantifiable way uh, of, uh, of, 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 of increasing your learning in a dramatic way. But these, uh, the, this is just competitions. What's really interesting is how to use this in daily life. And this is why I started to train my brain and to train my memory to be able to, because I love learning. I love learning all 
kinds of stuff. And I wanted, uh, I worked as a teacher also, and I love the aspect of the teaching people. And I saw that this can be uh, increased in a dramatic way, uh, both teaching other people to make them learn quicker, and also, of course, for yourself with some basic training principles. And this is what I started in 2008. And that's now a few years ago, but it only took me a few months to gain my first Swedish record and then becoming a, a champ. It's like you learn to drive a car. It takes a few months. Then you have this ability with you for the rest of your life. And you use it in daily life. When you read uh, interesting books or you sit at lectures or whatever you do, or, or at work where you need uh, to store, take in lots of new information. So then this skill can increase and become even better over the years, just like per, for hopefully you're driving or so. So this is the interesting thing that to, to find a, uh, to, a working strategy that you can have for learning any kind of information. And this is what I trained and this is what anyone can train. And the basics of this uh, of it is to teach your brain how to think in images. That's okay. to, to train your visualization skills because what you do then in the brain by visualizing images you get like a shortcut to the long-term memory. So uh, by thinking in images so then the brain can take in a lot of information quick. So this is the interesting when you when you compare our five uh, our five senses our sight, uh, I see in sense, is the most important to the brain. And this is true for everyone. You can actually see that three of each neurons, uh, all the neurons that work with uh, one of our senses, actually three quarters of them all work with our sight. Uh, and so th this is the important, if, if you compare it by learning through sound, for example, if I want to learn something by saying it out loud, uh, time after time, like a telephone number or anything, you just repeat like a parrot. That's, uh, then the brain can only take in a small, small, small amount. And that, then, that is in the characteristic of our sense. Uh, it's, not, it's not very different for different people. There, you know, there are this uh, bullshit stuff that everyone learns different. And, it, and in a way, we have, we have different likes and dislikes, but our brains are uh, pretty similar in its basic structure. So we, we who compete in memory and in learning, we all know that it's the same for all of us, that we have to see images, train our brain to visualize better then we can take in, in much more information fast. So now help me understand this. I, I've clearly read a few books on memory and I, I'm interested in this. I'm actually working on some, uh, some more intuition, creativity, but also memory training uh, software. And how does this work? Like, like walk someone who's sitting in their car right now who's saying, I'd, I'd like to be able to memorize just a hundred numbers to act with a thousand what is how do you visualize a number you look at it, it looks like number one like like what's what's the trick yeah let's pause with the numbers that's the most difficult let's right. take something much more easier uh, let's take every time that you read something let's say that you read the newspaper that's a perfect opportunity when when you're reading to do some brain training at the same time right and then it doesn't cost any extra time so what you do at the same time when you try to read something is the, the, at the same time then the, that you read, what you should do is to try to see the contents as a movie. The contents the of same, what you're reading, okay. Yeah, exactly. So if you read about, uh, let's say, uh, uh, in a newspaper article about a robbery, there is a robber fleeing, coming out from a bank, fleeing down the pavement. Uh, he has a black uh, hat, he has a green jacket, yellow pants, He's running down, chased by two cops with uh, guns drawn. Can you see this in a way? Right. And, and what you do to, tr to really to train your visualization skills is to hold that image for a little bit. Try to make it bigger. Try to see this, this, the robber with this, uh, with, with his uh, green jacket and uh, yellow pants. Try to see, and try to see the pavement a bit more detail and so on, and make it big. Then way the uh, because we all there there's actually very interesting uh, research published in uh, cognitive science that has proved that everyone think in images even if we don't believe we do <laughs> even the people wow. who say I'm not visual they do it because they tested this with uh, measuring eye movements 
and uh, when people see, and you can see the people that they see images because their eye movements uh, correspond to how they speak so and if we th if you think of it uh, maybe if you have read a novel uh, uh, in a way and then seen the same story as a movie maybe then you're you're always disappointed because you have already formed your own images of right. this novel uh, and that's the thing that we all have seen this in these images but uh, only quick and by chance. Uh, and it's through these images that we have all seen that we can follow the uh, a full story and remember stuff around and so on because we create these inner images. But now we change from these images popping up uh, automatically to now to do them consciously. That's the thing, to train this memory and uh, vis visualization skills. So if you're, for example, if you just t take something simple, if you want to become better at visualizations, just let's say, for example, visualize a dog. That if you decide for a, a certain specific type of, of dog, the first thing that comes to mind, you should always use the first thing that comes to your mind and see a dog in front of you. Try to make that image bigger. See it, it becomes like a, a meditation. It's a super good uh, visual, uh, meditation to see this dog and to see it s as clear as possible and to see it f in three dimensions that's also a very important aspect of becoming better at visualization to visualize in 3d because there's also a uh, uh, great research that has shown which images that stays the longest in the brain and that is images who have this clear shapes rounded uh, sharp edges or rounded parts so this 3d images so trying to see that is very important so and it, when you want to learn this in the beginning it's a bit tricky you have to almost force your can use your hand almost as can, can i see something between my hands a dog for example uh, like this but each time that you do it uh, the brain becomes more and more used to it and it starts to get automatic yeah, that's the thing that that you can you can actually you can encode any kind of information. Now it, it we started with this newspaper article. That's something very clear. But you go step and step uh, through this and learn to uh, translate all kinds of information into images. Even you can do crazy math math formulas and uh, as we showed, we you, you can do it with uh, numbers also. And, uh, but always to try to encounter, to do this. Also, when you sit, uh, you listen to someone speak. Can you s try to s make see what images that pop up to your mind and hold them there and try to see it in front of you? Then your brain will work almost like a mad magnet, sucking information into it, and you will b remember so much. Uh, so th and that's interesting because these images they work like clues for your brain. That you, that I, I have, you, there are clues that make you that you can remember and find your way to encode back to what was being said. So, if after you've read this newspaper article and you have these small uh, mental movies, small YouTube movies in the brain, then you retell the whole thing uh, by, by these clues, and what you will remember uh, notice is that you will remember far more uh, that is in the article then you have just, even if it's not all in the, the movie, but the, the movie, like, it gathers the information, like a magnet, it sucks lots of stuff to it, so, and you can quickly get things into your, uh, your long-term memory. Interesting. So it's all about the quality and the type of the visualization, and you've trained yourself to do that sort of by default. Now, what about things like basic intelligence? I mean, do you talk about what your IQ is? I have actually no idea. I haven't tested <laughs> it. And in a bit for a, for a reason also that it, this has nothing to do with it. Yeah. That step by step, I haven't encountered now for the five years I've been working with this, writing two books and being out a lot in, both in schools and with uh, uh, and at companies uh, to train different people. I haven't encountered a single person who is too stupid or so because it's basically... What, what I did notice, however, that it, it's so much faster for a seventh grade person to learn this <laughs> than for an uh, executive uh, uh, or a researcher or some, some high-profile company people. So that, that was, that's actually amazing. One of my books in, in Swedish, though, but it's for how to use this kind of thinking in school and to get this thinking in images to become automatic from the early start. So you have this 
through the for your the rest of your life basically and this is actually this is the new step within uh, memory and uh, uh, memory training because there are all these old techniques that people talk about creating stories and so on but that's like uh, that is too tough for the brain and seeing uh, violent and sex uh, th things that, that that's too much uh, it's, it's too much strength uh, from the brain needed for that so you become exhausted you can't use that every day but the, the, the thing is to have it become automatic like uh, like we did for example we've all learned to write uh, on to store information on paper through learning an alphabet, to using the pen, so now we don't need to think how we do it. So what I've learned, and that anyone can learn, is how to write uh, directly into the brain. Mm -hmm. then, then you need a new alphabet, which is an alphabet that consists of pictures. And a new uh, grammar to form new words, how to connect these images together in a way that you can always find yourself back to them and, and remember what you, you would. And then it's the using your mental pen, which, which is your uh, visualization skills. So, so that becomes, so I never need to think about how to store any, uh, the information. It just happens when I decide it. So, so having a built-in new skill on demand is something a lot of people would be interested in having, me included. What kind of commitment does it take to learn this? Like how much time, how much effort, how hard is it? How long do you need to do this before it really becomes automatic? For me, it took about four months of training two hours a day, four days a week. So that's uh, a substantial commitment. Yeah, but look at how much time we do in a lot of stuff. That you, uh, people who learn to, it's like, uh, yeah, it, it's two hours a day, four days a week for four months, then you have it. Like you, you yeah. get your driver's license and then you have it for the rest of your life. It's like a one-time yeah. upgrade and once you've got it, you've got yeah. it. And there's great value to that. I, I'm interested in doing that, although honestly, for me, finding two hours a day for four months right now is yeah. probably, you need to find time in life when you're Excellent. willing and, and it, it's a good time to, to do that. Like for instance, you have a new baby, right? Yeah. So, would you recommend? I'm happy to have that be behind me. But <laughs> the, the thing, what I did, I did it through an online training, which is, is super. Where you have 60 lessons, where you go through all kinds of information, how you do that, and how you train it to become an automatic skill that you can use for anything. The, this kind of uh, uh, online training, I do it myself in Sweden. Uh, run it under it's called Mind Academy there for Swedish people. For English people, you can find that pmemory.com. Uh, so it's just easy just start to train doing each lesson uh, and then uh, for 60 lessons then you're done and then you have this skill so then that that's a good recommendation to, to really get it done but but you can th then the key is also that even if you don't have the time to be smart to use even when you when you read something try to visualize it in front of you make the images bigger and try to see uh, to see things in 3d ahead of you for example, people who learn, uh, you, you can make anything you can uh, in 3D. For example, people who learn uh, new languages with, uh, when you learn new signs, for example. It's almost magic what happens when you draw these signs, like a uh, uh, hiragana sign or a Japanese or Chinese. Uh, you, when you draw it out and it becomes 3D and the brain then uh, starts to, uh, when these uh, visual connections that goes into much quicker into the long-term memory directly. And you, you can have control over it. And the, this is basically it, that this is a controlled way to use your uh, memory. So you actually, you know what you know, and you know what you have, don't know also. So, okay. so, so a little funny thing is that, so I've learned this, so I can decide whatever I want to remember. Even if it's a complex thing, uh, I know how much time it, uh, it will take, but I quickly can learn it and be sure that I know it. But the funny thing is that I can also decide for how long I want to remember this. If I want to remember it for a few days, a week, a month, six months, a year, or, or for the rest of my life, this I can decide. And how do you make that programmable? That sounds really interesting. Yeah. 
because I know what I do that when I uh, when I have make these visual connections, I connect. Basically, what I do is always connect two images at the same time together. So I train my brain to two images at the same time. So that's become more or less automatic. Those kinds of connections in the brain, I know they will be with me for about five hours. That that's for how long? And after five hours, I might start to forget some of those. So if it's a competition event, that, uh, then it's fine. After five hours, I can forget it. But if it's something important that I've learned, then I know that I have to strengthen these visual connections before five hours. So what I do is that I then mentally just look through the images I have created. It's very fast, and it's like, like, like you browse uh, images on a smartphone. Image after image very, very quickly, and you do it mentally. If I do this before the five hours has passed, then uh, I know that the things will be with me for the whole next day, basically. And this, this is approximation, but this is uh, what's true for me where I am right now. Okay. But it's almost uh, it's very close for people. And uh, if I want to be, have it longer uh, than uh, for the next day, then I know I have the full next day to sometime go through it again quickly, then I know it will be with me for maybe three days. So you're doing the, the spaced repetition where we, we've figured out how much time can elapse if you want to remember something forever, and you're, you're applying that to the memory sport. Okay, that, that's really yeah. cool. Awesome. And the interesting thing is also that, that this kind of mental repetition, I never need to look at the original material again. So I don't need to have the papers or listen to whatever it was. So, that's, so then I can do this at dead times during the day. That if I wait for some wait for someone, I go through a couple of images. I brush my teeth. I can go through a couple of images. Then next time I do I have a short time, then I go through another continue where I was, go through a couple of images. So I don't give any extra time into it, this. Is isn't that kind of stressful? Like sometimes that you want to just take a break or just like you know play with your baby or something like that, and you're like constantly like like cognitively spinning here. It, it seems to me like that would maybe not be a relaxing practice no definitely not but it, it's a uh, it's all controlled it's all chosen i choose when i want to do it and i stop when i need to stop just like learning how to write that just because you can write you don't go around writing down everything and this is so quick so it may may, may it takes two minutes to go through a uh, a quarter of memory memorized stuff so it's very uh, very quickly, and then it's done, and then I don't do it anymore. Okay. And it's only these first days because if the next time I do it, it for each time you do it, it stays with you longer. So then, if uh, uh, if I do it after three days, then it will stay with me for a week. And if I do it, then I, I, I do it, it once during that week, it will stay maybe two weeks. Okay. Uh, so you decide if it's important, you spend a little extra time on it. Well, is doping a problem in memory sports? Uh, not so far that I know of. Are there and, rules uh, against it? No. Oh. Uh, there are some kind of ethic rules, though. But this is another very interesting area, and the, uh, smart drugs and so on, that I'm starting to learn more about and what, what works and what doesn't. And I've actually, I just did, uh, I did some, uh, me and my wife, uh, my wife is a PhD in medicine, she set up a blind study for me uh, because I got my hands on some seal tap, you know, the, those yeah, fantastic we, we, guys. Yeah, we carry it in the, the bulletproof store, right? Yeah. So what I did, we did a blind test where I, for 10 days, uh, each morning I had, uh, for five days I had placebo, for five days I had seal tap, and I didn't know when. And I did the same routine, ate the same thing, uh, had my bulletproof coffee every day, of oh. course. That's how <laughs> I always start my day now. <laughs> So, uh, but I did, um, and at the same time, I did our ofi the official rules of the uh, this, the event speed cards, where you look through a deck of cards once, time, and you time it for how long it takes, and then you try. So I did uh, two trials each day uh, for ten days, and I had no idea if I was on seal tap or not, but I saw which day worked. Uh, the best and then when we uh, put the, the because I never told my wife she knows what I was taking but I didn't tell her about the memorization results just wrote everything down and then we checked and out of these 20 trials that I did in these 10 days my four fastest ones were all on seal tap and uh, the failed trials you know the, the the rules in memory sports are super strict even if you have a single mistakes 
it's considered a failed trial. So I did eight failed trials, and uh, only two of those were on Siltep. Uh, wow. Six that, of them was on placebo. So that's that was substantial. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, that's impressive. Uh, I, I, I'm a fan of Siltep for sure. And we've had uh, Abelard on the show, uh, the guy who invented the stuff. Yeah. And, and if you're listening to this, it's C-I-L-T-E-P. And if you've never heard of this, it's an extract of artichoke combined with an Ayurvedic herb called forscolin. And when you combine these things, they uh, basically can long-term potentiate the cells in your brain. So they work better. So I, I don't use it every day, but I do definitely use it for cognitive boosts. Uh, are you going to be taking it every day now? No. I don't want to do, I tried not to do two things, so many things each day, except maybe bulletproof coffee though. <laughs> but to, I think it's important to cycle things, uh, not I, to. Uh, I cycle things too, except bulletproof coffee, just because it's obvious when I cycle that, I don't, I, yeah. I'm just not the <laughs> same. I can tell you the story, actually, when I start, after my first year of uh, uh, memory competitions, I noticed during these days that we compete, you know, there are, so uh, tough days on the competition. You know, memory sports is the most uh, tough thing you can do for your concentration. Yeah. Because you have to have, eat, where, there are some disciplines where each millisecond is important because a single other thought that makes you lose a point, basically. You can, uh, so it's very uh, like that. And I noticed we have very long days from early in the morning to late in the evening. And I noticed on my first year that I was getting incredibly tired and I was always doing worse in, uh, in the afternoon. And I saw uh, I'm not living up to my standards here. Yeah. So what I then did uh, that I switched and I found out about uh, what it is uh, uh, about the low carb, high fat diet. Yeah. And this was a total game changer for me uh, <laughs> in this. Uh, that was like, because I was not in, I heard about this diet, you lose weight and so on. I was not very interested, but I had already started doing some quantifiable tests when I quit, because uh, then I was do, doing all kinds of energy drinks and so on. Then. Yeah. But even if when I was stoked on these energy drinks, uh, that was horrible for the concentration and focus. It's worse. So even when I forced myself to quit those massive headaches, tired, I scored better. Wow. That. So, but then the uh, switching to the low, uh, low fat, uh, uh, low carb, high fat diet may really changes this. So I, I immediately had strict uh, before three weeks before each competition. I was super strict on this. Uh, and what I noticed was that I could go on these days like, uh, uh, I don't know what, but the full day, I was not even tired in the evening. And so, the important uh, thing for me was that I didn't have these dips. Uh, yeah, the cognitive the endurance, so. you, just, you get the cognitive endurance because you have the ketones. It, yeah. It's like, like burning a, a giant piece of coal instead of like a bunch of like pieces of grass that just like that's what sugar does. Like it just puff and it's gone. Right? Definitely. And all sugar and stuff that all messes with your uh, hunger uh, sensations uh -huh. and so on. Because if you really want to focus, uh, you can't be hungry. So, so the people who notice that, uh, most people know that you don't have a big bowl of pasta if you want to perform in memory sports in the afternoon. So then they try to eat a small salad or so, but then they get super hungry. So then can, they can't pr perform on that either. But with a good, uh, with a uh, low carb, high fat diet, you're more in control of your hunger uh, feelings and you're, you're not a slave during this. You can go on for a long time even if you need to and you don't have food because the brain have uh, have the fuel it needs anyway. So that it's a total myth, this thing that the brain needs, uh, you need to eat sugar or carbs for the brain to work. That's, uh, that's like an, uh, someone who tries to stop smoking cigarettes and say, oh, not smoking uh, cigarettes gives me terrible headaches or whatever. When, when you go it's, super, it's, a, it's a change. <clears throat> when you go super strict for three or four weeks, don't you find that your sleep quality declines after a while? Well, super strict. It's a, I do a low-carb, high-fat. It's not no-carb, uh, high-fat. There, there you go. And this is important for people listening. Uh, yeah. On the Bulletproof Diet, a lot of people, they get into it like, oh, I just have like some green vegetables and meat, and I feel amazing. I'm like, yeah, that's good for a couple weeks. But when I did this for three months straight, I actually got new food allergies because at a certain point, you need some carbs to make polysaccharides, which line your cells. They make mucus. They make tears. And I'd gotten below that threshold. So there's some minimum effective carbs 
Uh, and a few people, people who've been on the show, can have zero carbs for the rest of their life, and they seem to be fine. But they're a yeah. small minority from what my experience with clients and myself. So you're the same way. How many carbs do you eat every day? No, I get basically get my carbs from uh, from uh, ve vegetables above ground and so on. So I don't need so much, uh, but I do cycle it sometimes, some with some rice or some yeah. uh, something in the evening. Have some. Uh, you talked about chocolate. I love the uh, Lint 90% chocolate. Yeah. It's my uh, the, the very best brand that we can get over here at least. That's good uh, stuff. So, uh, but I, I do it, and I'm not always that. It depends on what I have to do yeah. on, and, and how the, the coming week is. Uh, so I'm not doing the same, eating the same thing each day. But and my uh, my wife is also very. She's a big fan of uh, Terry Walls protocol. So we eat tons of vegetables and so yeah. on. So we. Uh, if you eat tons of veggies and a high fat diet and a moderate amount of high quality protein and every now and then you have enough carbs to go out of ketosis that's going to get you there and you know terry and i are, are friends we you know we we see things very much eye to eye I, i'm a fan of her yeah. protocols you know she uses actually brain octane oil and our, the glutathione uh so I, I would endorse her writing for sure mm. um so it, it it's funny that you've noticed that another thing in fact um we first met in person uh, when you were out here on Vancouver Island. Yeah. Right. And you were out here to do the, the 40 years of Zen uh, neurofeedback thing. And it, it's interesting during that kind of training, which for me, not having done a memory competition, the most mentally taxing thing that I know is to sit in a neurofeedback chamber for hours and hours, focusing all of my energy on making my brain do what a Zen master would do. So like you said, one little slip up, the sounds get quieter, your score goes yeah. down. So it's like laser focus and it's, it's like running a marathon with your brain. Yeah. So for me to do that without, in this case, you don't even use coffee during that time, which is painful, but coffee can suppress very high alpha waves, which isn't a problem in daily life. But if you're trying to do Zen mastery work in a chamber, it is. Even then, like the replacement for Bulletproof Coffee is brain octane, butter, and vanilla. Because without the fats, I don't know how to, I just don't know how to bring it the way oh. you can when you're on that high fat thing. Did you notice a difference when you were doing the, the neurofeedback training 40 years of Zen? Does that kind of intent focus feel like a memory competition or is it a different thing? Because I, I don't, I only it know one or the other. It's a different thing uh, in one way uh, because if you do really super focused uh, visualization of certain uh, shapes and so on, that brings the beta uh, beta waves. Uh, oh, visual, for, of course. Uh, so, but it's it's all about control. That, that's my. It was a fantastic week, super intense. Uh, so, but it's very complementary to what I do with my kind of memory training. Who's a conscious? That's a conscious thing uh, that you want to become an automatic skill. Here, it was uh, finding this. That, that's my impression of the being in the finding the highest alpha and remaining there to find this uh, relaxed focus where uh, the place where all the ide ideas come to you, yeah. basically. When you're you're just there, so you 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 understand things, you see connections, and the, it, it, new ideas pop up, and so on. And to learn to be there consciously, and to use that state for uh, working on yourself or on ideas or basic stuff. So, yeah, that that was a really phenomenal uh, week. I'm looking forward to. I, I I would like to do it even more if I had the chance. It, interesting. Um, thanks for explaining the difference there. One of the things that you learn when you start to raise the alpha in your brain is that when you open your eyes or when you think about 3D shapes, that it lowers alpha. So what I don't know, though, is whether there's some line between alpha and beta, which is what you bring on when you do this visualization. And beta is not a good or a bad thing. Excess beta yeah. with a lack of alpha is bad, but it, it's, you know, even cortisol, no cortisol, you die, too much cortisol, you die. Like yeah. there's always, there's always somewhere in the middle where you want to be. So you may be one of the most experienced people on earth in terms of switching between a functional beta state, not a fight or flight beta state, but uh, I'm using yeah. my brain for this and an alpha state where I'm not using my brain for that. Um, how does it feel when you switch from one state to the other? Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's the, the the sensation of control is amazing okay. that you can decide that it is uh, the experience of sitting in the chamber with the tones and you can be able to have them go up 
when you want to basically it's like and afterward this rings on so it's like okay should i put on my tones now yeah that would be a good idea i don't have the tones but i've done this so much in that week so uh, what what do i need right now no now i need focus focused writing then it's that kind of focus so it's like taming this uh, this this focus to go into uh, to different modes basically and to wor- what is important there was was shown in that training that it's because in your actually in your current in your state of mind at a at certain time that state is filled with so much emotions and your past and stuff so basically you also it's not uh, to, to be able to control and go and uh, make tones higher or lower when you need to you also have to be more in control with your emotions and know about them and so uh, the, this is also a very important uh, thing when it comes to brain training and when it comes for my memory training also to switch on my uh, super focus during uh, competitions that I can't be feel I can't I couldn't have an argue with my wife before going to competition that would be di- a disaster or and uh, I have to work long term with that and uh, I've done a lot of meditation but uh, to do uh, this to do it uh, with neurofeedback training there to get the constant 50 times per second feedback when you're doing the men- uh, meditation correct is just uh, phenomenal so, so you do meditate as part of your your mental training. Is there a kind of meditation that you 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 focus on that helps you best with being a memory champion? No, I've done. I'm I'm very open. I've done so many different kinds. Okay. I started actually my whole uh, inner uh, journey of mental training. I started with the uh, transcendental meditation back uh, in the days, and that totally blew my mind. Up and I saw that there are uh, huge possibilities in life that we are not uh, aware of, that we are not taught about in school. But from there on, I and, uh, noticed, uh, discovered this, the quantifiable uh, uh, ways of training your brain uh, and uh, and how this interacts with diet and food. So food is the number one smart drug there is. It, it's amazing <laughs> that it's not in the mainstream how much our food. Uh, uh, um, decides our, uh, how, how it uh, applies to our way of focus. Yeah. So why is this not talked about in school? Well, when, uh, when the Bulletproof Diet book comes out December 2nd, there's actually a couple chapters on food and focus because it's such a big thing. And, and the yeah. mechanisms, I, I've mapped that out as best I can with studies mm-hmm. and science and anecdotes. Because like you said, if, if they would just tell you that, every ninth grader I know wants to pay attention and mm. they're just as frustrated as we are when their brains are like bouncing all over the place and then mm. we're adults and we're trying to work and you're in a meeting and you start thinking about whatever the heck it is you think about that is tied to what you ate and it's just non-obvious but it is so you yeah. you've got that because you've developed this laser focus so that you can just focus and remember things so you'll notice when the laser breaks up and then you correlate that to what you ate What's the food that's most kryptonite for you? Like the thing that just doesn't work. And that's the interesting. When I first started with this, just it was just basic low carb, high fat. But then getting into it more and more, and that's uh, I love your work to 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 really learn more the details. Uh, that's been a big thing for me now. Has been to uh, quit gluten uh, yeah. totally. Yeah, that Not- stuff is rots your brain. <laughs> yeah, and even I noticed because when I in between competition and so on, I could have a piece of bread, but I, it's not that's not worth it. You can have some other stuff, uh, and that's okay. But just in gluten, so that's been a, a big thing to me. And then to uh, to really explore bulletproof coffee. Has, now I don't compete anymore. Uh, so, but uh, bulletproof coffee has uh, taken my uh, daily performance to a whole new level. Uh, so that was. Since last year, I, I started doing a daily bulletproof coffee in the morning, and it's just transformed my day uh, even more. So it's, and uh, so after this, now I'm Thanks. getting che- checking even more stuff like with the uh, with good, uh, yeah, for example, siltapids also. It's, it's but but you can't do the top things in the pyramid first. You need <laughs> if you don't care yes. about your food, it's uh, everything else is just. Uh, 
uh, a waste of time, basically. You, you can take a, a cow pie that's American for you know cow manure, and you can put chocolate frosting on it, which would be bulletproof coffee or salt. It's still a lump of crap. Like yeah. you, you've got to fill in the right foods and get your biology working, and then you can really do it. Or, or I don't know if this is popular in Sweden, but you ever see like a a five hundred dollar car that's falling apart with five thousand dollar wheels on it? Yeah. Uh, honestly, exactly. upgrade the car before you upgrade the wheels and, and Siltep or Bulletproof Coffee or these advanced training techniques, all of those require a foundation. So thank you for saying that, uh, Matthias. Yeah. It, it's so important and it makes me sad when people eat, you know, French fries, pizza and beer and like, yeah, I'm going to go train my brain. Like you might get some benefits, but like you're not you're not getting it. Like screw the brain yeah. training. Just eat something that's good for you. Definitely, and things will start to happen. And to add to that whole scheme, I would say also to care about also, you need to pay attention to both the software of your machine and to the hardware. Yeah. So with the food and all this hardware, it's super important. What I do with the memory training is like the, getting the best uh, software program for yes. the brain. Uh, and these are color red. You, you can't have a high uh, speed working software if you have crappy hardware. And... Uh, vice versa in a way so both they are both uh, important yeah. and to throw a bit of heart in there you also need to work on your emotions and relationships and uh, all that kind of uh, gooey stuff the, the super geeky part of me you know being a cloud computing guy and and computer innovator there's hardware which you got to get your cells working and your hormones like eat good stuff and there's like a layer of firmware which a lot of people don't even know what that is but these are like the chips that have software on them that are in your computer so when you turn it on it knows how to load the actual software and that that firmware layer is like your sympathetic nervous system your fight or flight response that gooey stuff you just mentioned yeah. if that stuff isn't working very well it doesn't matter what you're trying to do with your thoughts because your firmware that's sitting between the hardware and your thinking it gets in the way and those the lack of focus from being hungry well that's a firmware function the firmware's like I, I, I'm freaking out here. I didn't get the bagel I wanted. So then you, your software gets a glitch. So for me, I had to start with the body and like I've been transformed and then I had to deal with the emotions and all of a sudden then I could do things like pay attention and I yeah. can use the attention for anything, whether it's memory training kind of stuff, which admittedly I haven't done a lot of your kind of memory training at all. I've, I've read about it or like the 40 years of Zen or anything like writing a book or just like being fully present. I don't know that, that you can achieve the heights of memory mastery that you have if you have like all sorts of emotional stuff stirring. So did you use TM to get rid of your, or not get rid of, but at least to, to, to tame the emotional spiritual stuff that sits between your thinking and your, your, your body? Not in particular, TM was uh, much earlier, but okay. a lot of work, actually I worked a lot of uh, actionable uh, uh, meditation in action and almost uh, trying to distress myself as much uh, and uh, what I used for that was I actually did a lot of something called Gurdjieff movements uh, and Gurdjieff was one of these uh, uh, spiritual uh, western spirit uh, spiritual teachers which in a very practical way wanted to challenge your focus so there you basically do different things with different parts of the body mm -hmm. at the same time uh, one thing with the arms, another thing, you know, uh, another thing with the, uh, so you, you do too much and then you learn to uh, be focused uh, uh -huh. there when it's the most hard. Uh, and that's when all the emotional stuff come up also that you have to do something with. That, but that, that, is... that I, also, I, I took that also into the memory training. I did, okay. in this program I did the, the, the online course, uh, there's this phase where you use a, a computer software where you have learned to do the basic stuff, uh, so you can do numbers, for example. Then this computer program shows you each two seconds or so, shows you a new number, and you try to memorize it, uh, that you have learned, you have trained this for a while. But so in the beginning, you need total quietness, basically. So I started like that, but after a while, I could, I could get it. Uh, then, to make it harder, I put on the uh, radio uh, with music, and then I, uh, at the same, again, I tried to memorize the same thing. And that was super tough on the focus because yeah. the focus goes to the music and then you have to pull it back what's to the, the numbers. What's the worst kind of music for focus? 
I actually did uh, both music I love and both music I hate and tried different styles. It was uh, basically not uh, so much different. It was all okay. dif difficult. But then I trained. I trained. I didn't get, get, give up. So after a while, I could keep the focus. But then I took it to the next level. So then I uh, turned on the TV or radio with talk, uh, talk oh, radio, basically. That's with very With voices talking. And I took, uh, tried to find programs that I thought were really interesting. In, uh, so interesting stuff uh, with people talking about, but all the time focus on the, the, the numbers, the training. And then again, results dropped terribly because I wanted to listen to this stuff. Uh, but I, I, I continued pulling my focus back to the numbers. And after a while, I can do the focus even there. So that has been a very solid, uh, solid uh, uh, part of being able to have super focus. So you can see that in memory competitions, most people sit with a big, uh, they have both earplugs and big, this uh, building uh, uh, head uh, cups. Or, but I never use any of that stuff because I'm prepared. I, uh, even wow. if, if, if people are making noises, I can put on my focus because I've trained it like that. I'm not, I don't need to make everything quiet around me because, because I want to use my uh, focus and memory skills uh, anytime in any situation. I, I've got to say, if, if people aren't impressed by that, this is no different than someone who's, who's practiced that incredible focus to you know, power lift or to, to become an advanced martial artist. You're just training focus, which is harder to see, but, but those skills do not come easily. Like They come with a lot of work. And, and you're your comment about it, it causing like a, especially the Gurdjieff movement exercises, causing a just frustration. I did something a while back called five rhythms dancing or movement. And it was something that, that made me feel like an absolute complete failure. And that's what it's designed to do. And you stand, yeah. in, you stand in a circle and there's someone in the middle banging a drum and there's someone else playing this crazy Brazilian instrument that's stringed. It sounds cool. I don't remember what its name is. And it, then there's a dance and they show you the dance and you start doing the dance and then they change the music and they change the dance constantly and it's overwhelming because you're trying to put your feet in the right place you know get it right and then your your nervous system basically that firmware layer yeah. gets in there and goes you know you're dumb everyone else is doing it. you're not doing it right and everyone else's mind has the same thing going on but you don't yeah. know it so you spend like six hours feeling like the world's dumbest person and when you're done you're like ready to cry Mm -hmm. And the whole point of it is to make you face those feelings so that they'll shut the heck up. And, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so what you did is you trained that early on and then you went in later and then you said, right, I'm going to train while I'm doing my skill with all these crazy distractions. That requires a lot of willpower and focus. Man, kudos. That, that is not a simple practice that you developed there. Uh, it's interesting what you can do, and I, I didn't even tell you the last step of that uh, ladder. Oh, what is it? Because when I had when I had the uh, when I had the the noises from TV and so on with people talking, and then random numbers, two-digit numbers uh, coming randomly, uh, the last step was that I start at the same time. I counted loudly. 99, 98, 96, 97, at the same time memorizing completely other uh, random numbers. That's but, impressive. Wow. But this actually, because this is, happens in the different uh, senses, that it almost gets easily because I, I, uh, the, uh, the speaking, uh, the, the hearing sense, I put that automatically beyond 99, 98. So the numbers that come on, it's only visualization. And that is the key to remembering. So I don't say the numbers, I only, they're only, because my other, the speaking is uh, busy with other stuff. So I can only focus on that. Uh, so, so that is, and that, by, by the way, I had to upgrade that system also with my, I, I said I had an image for each two digit numbers that, that, that made me too slow. And I had difficulty of reaching my grandmaster, uh, title like, with the, the numbers. So I had to upgrade it. So now I have a, a different image for each three digit number. So you have a thousand images uh, that you store. I have a thousand store. images just for, uh, just for numbers, which makes uh, that I need a, uh, less images, but I would get so what, more numbers like that. What image is associated with 999? That's a, uh, it's like a tie in a uh, turquoise uh, tie. A turquoise uh, tie, all right. Uh, uh, this kind of bow tie. Uh, okay, yeah, a bow tie, got it. Uh, that's the interesting thing that language is uh, limited. There are only so many words 
but there are an, an uh, endless amount of images. If you say elephant, I can do, I can easily have a hundred uh, images for an elephant. I can have a, a pink elephant in plastic. I can have a, a elephant that is sitting down. It's made of chocolate or an, uh, a half cut elephant in iron. <laughs> All those are elephants, and so you can have def basically some of those images I have. Is so I have to think how do I describe this image? Because it's a picture, not actually. It's not just yeah. the concept of a bow tie. It's a, f a picture of a specific bow tie in a specific color and a specific knot kind of thing. Exactly, right. it's in a specific shape. Uh, awesome. Well, you you have a fascinating brain, Matthias, and we're up against the end of the show. And there's a question that I'm sure you're expecting me to ask because you've heard the show before, and. I'm hoping you haven't prepared ahead of time for it. If you have, you remember your answers. <laughs> so uh, the question is, what are the top three pieces of advice you'd have for people who want to perform better at whatever it is they're here to do? I, I don't mean just memory tips. I mean, if you want to kick more ass at being human, what are the tricks? Yeah, we have talked about so much, but I want again to say to, to find a, a way to work on your emotions, to work on your upgrading your relationships, not to sit by yourself in a cell or try to upgrade yourself with different supplements or, or, or a training mechanism, but to upgrade your uh, relationships. Uh, to upgrade uh, with uh, with the opposite sex, with with the uh, the uh, experience of sex, the uh, your uh, or with your par the relationships with your parents, all these things. You really have to work, and that that can really clear away stuff, so you can take your mental focus or whatever you want to do into whole new levels. But you can't skip those things. But uh, but for some people, it's too much. Nah. I want to do these fun little chemicals, uh, but you will, you won't get anywhere if you don't deal with your emotional issues. And uh, I, I know someone said this a uh, very good th thing. I thought if, if you have parents, you have issues. So, uh, <laughs> so get started working on your relationships uh, okay. to other people. Uh, that would be one thing. Great. And this is more of a summary then. But then that we have so to speak for the heart, then for the mind to train yourself to become a visual thinker because everyone can do it. It's just a matter of getting into, into that new habit. They can uh, take in information and use it and understand things much quicker. And it also becomes a very creative uh, thing that we haven't talked about, but uh, never mind. For the mind and then for the body, stay off the grains, sugar, eat plenty of butter <laughs> with, <laughs> with coffee or whatever, uh, and uh, you'll be fine. Uh, great, uh, great advice, uh, all of the above. Where can people find out more? And, and I should say, uh, by the way, we should have mentioned this earlier. Um, you run the Swedish uh, dis distributor for uh, Bulletproof products in, in Sweden. So definitely give your URL so people in, in Sweden uh, can, order, can order those things and also learn about your memory training, the other things you do. People in uh, the rest of the world uh, may be interested in, in things as well, especially to the extent you have them in English. So what are the URLs we should know about? Yeah, you can contact, always contact me on Twitter, uh, Matthias Ribbing. Uh, and uh, I have not an English personal web page uh, yet, but I, I will have to get that uh, stuff now, I guess. But what, uh, I actually, I have to tell you about this, that we our, our new company, I uh, teamed up with a leading paleo uh, educator in Sweden, Jonas uh, Bergqvist, who's expert in the body, expert me, expert in the brain, and my wife, PhD in medicine with outstanding uh, uh, scientific skills. Uh, we've started this company, Succeeder, uh, which, take in the, which wants to find the new, the real solutions for optimal uh, physical and mental uh, performance. So the, your bulletproof products, we lo absolutely love them. And we are now, I just heard the other day, we're also allowed to, uh, to ship them out to the whole of Scandinavia. So oh, we'll beautiful. Go to succeeder.se if you want to uh, have it uh, much easier with the customs than if you have to import from the U.S. Yeah, it's, it's a, we ship to Europe because people ask us to. Uh, we don't like doing it either because there's always some immigration guy somewhere, border, yeah. we have no control over it. So. No. By all means, uh, I, I would lo I love it that you uh, they're willing to do that and that you're helping people get the good stuff over there. 
Yeah, and in Swedish, if you're in Swedish, uh, the memory training is mindacademy.se. If you're in English, go to pmemory.com. That's the same, exact the same way I learned it. You can do the, the same way. Uh, uh, just take the lessons one by one, so, and there you have the whole thing. Okay. So uh, I'd love to hear some uh, thoughts from people. Just contact me on Twitter. And Matthias, uh, it, did we confirm, are you going to be coming to the Bulletproof Conference on September 26th through 28th? Yes. yes, we've got it locked down. All right, and you'll be Definitely. speaking. Definitely, it would be fun. Then I'll do some showing off with the skills also. Awesome. So if you haven't signed up for that, bulletproofconference.com, I believe, actually by the time this goes live, we'll probably be out of early bird passes, but there may still be a chance. So bulletproofconference.com, you'll get to hang out with me and with Matthias and ask all sorts of questions about Siltep, memory, bulletproof coffee, and training your emotions and your memory. Matthias, it's always a pleasure. Can't wait to see you again in person. Me too. Have a great night, day. Check out Siltep Smart Drug. This is an herbal preparation that was recently discovered where a synergistic combination of natural ingredients helps long-term potentiation in the brain. And you can buy Siltep now on UpgradedSelf.com. The next ingredient that is absolutely required, you owe it to yourself to try it made this way one time. It's called brain octane oil. Brain octane oil is 18 times stronger than coconut oil, specifically for mental clarity. It's designed for metabolic function.